Hello everybody and welcome to the Suburban Rider Science Show. I have been hiding out for the last two days inside my house since temperatures have been well over 104 degrees. But now it's out to a little more manageable upper 90s. And I was asked by my friend, Don, Airliner 750, if I could give a more layman's explanation of what's going on with the Atom Smasher, in other words, the CERN, and their discovery of either the Higgs boson or, as they're saying, a Higgs-like particle. So I will do my best to try. I think it's near impossible to get a totally understanding of everything because I think even the physicists themselves make educated guesses as much as they actually understand anything, but I'll do my best. So let's start out. There's two main types of subatomic particles. Those are the fermions, which includes electrons, neutrinos, and quarks. And then you have the bosons, which is a photon. A photon is a boson, and you have the W and Z bosons, which are part of the weak interaction that has to do with radioactivity. And the W boson has a minus and a plus. The one is the antiparticle of the other, and the Z boson is just neutral, so it's its own antiparticle. And they have the predicted Higgs boson that may or may not be. As a matter of fact, uh, Stephen Hawking stands to lose a $100 bet if they do actually prove the Higgs boson, which I think they still have a ways to go. Now, the reason why they're calling it a Higgs-like particle is they expected it to have a mass of 125 gigavolts and uh, it's a little bit out of that range. They say it's still within statistical error but it's enough out of that range right now to give them concern and what you really need to understand is there's two type of forces. There's vector forces and there's scalar forces. Scalar forces act in all directions. Vector forces act in one direction. For example, a magnet. If you have a magnet, you're, if you hold it up to an object, it's going to pull it towards the magnet. It's not going to pull something in. It's not going to um, exert its force in all different directions because it's a vector force. Same way with gravity. If you have an object approaching the Earth, gravity is going to pull it straight towards the Earth. It's not going to pull it off in a sideways direction or anything else. So that's what a vector force is. It, it tends to move things or resist moving in one particular direction. Now a scalar force would operate in all directions. And so what they need to find out with this Higgs-like particle, if it produces a scalar type of force, non-directional, because since the Higgs boson is related to mass, mass resists movement with what they think is the Higgs field, but since it resists movement in all directions equally, it's a scalar force. And the key to that, and they're going to find that out towards the end of this year, they said, is they're going to have to try to figure out the particle spin. If the particle has a spin, it can't be the Higgs boson. If it has zero spin, then it's not creating a directional force, and it will actually be a scalar particle. Let's see if this person is going to move out of my way. Are they going to just take the spot? They're going to take the spot. Okay, what we're going to do is we're just going to park over in another section. So anyway, that's where we are at right now. I'm still sticking with my guess. I mean, I'm nowhere near Stephen Hawking. As a matter of fact, I am uh, not somebody that even has a minor degree in physics. I was more heavy into chemistry and biology in college, but I'm still sticking to my guns and believing that there may be the possibility that Stephen Hawking will win the bet. But you never know. So anyway, I hope that basically 
gave you at least somewhat of an explanation and understanding of uh, what is going on. Um, the only more basic way I could really explain it is uh, as you go up more and more and smash things together with higher and higher voltages, it's kind of like uh, using a heavier and heavier hammer. You got a certain hammer that could smash a block of concrete and see what's inside, but then if you want to smash a something that's encased in steel, you're going to need a bigger hammer and a lot more power. And then if it's encased in titanium, you're going to need it even more. Well, what we're talking about with the um, CERN Large Hadron Collider is you're talking about now forces to crack the titanium ball open and see what's inside. Now they can reach that kind of power to be able to do that. And as you get farther and farther down the scale, you need more power to crack open the stronger and stronger uh, encasements and see what's inside.